Kevin? What are you doing? No, I'm not. I tried. seen that old copper wine, uh, wine goblet sitting in there, so I decided to heck with it. I'm going to go ahead and weld it together. So let me finish this little bit, and then I'll talk with you. So working on this copper goblet, you know, I, I turned this out on the lathe, oh, I don't know, a year ago, <laughs> and it's just been sitting on the shelf in the office. I finally got tired of looking at it, so I thought, well, I got the big, big welder, I got the big, you know, uh, Everlast 255 power TIG out for something else I was working on, and I figured, what the heck? Let's crank it up to max. Let's put it to work. Let's, you know, play with a little copper here. You gotta have all that horsepower. You know, you gotta have all that amperage over there because when you're working with copper, well, it's a great heat sink. You know, that's its job really. It's a heat sink. You know, conducting electricity makes great frying pans, things like that. Well. Boy, you got to hit it hard. You, know, you really got to step on it. You know, I was running with the foot pedal just all the way to the floor, 255 amps over there, you know, just trying to get it hot. I tried my little propane torch. Wouldn't even come near it. Wouldn't even get it anywhere near up to temperature. So I thought about getting the oxygen settling, but then you got that to mess with. You got the torch. You got the flame. You got the gas. You got the TIG. You got the... And doing it all one-handed, you know, we're just one person. Now, let's leave that over there out of the way for now. You know, so I, I got it up a little bit with the propane. And then just sit here, you know, with 255 amps. Just warm it up, warm it up, warm it up, warm it up. You know, it's a lot, it kind of acts like um, aluminum, really. You know, it takes a lot of heat. You really got to get on it. And then all of a sudden you're welding. See that little bump right there? Yeah. This is a piece of quarter-inch copper plate, and I was just using it to, you know, check my settings. You know, I tried a little AC instead of DC just to see what that would do. <laughs> Don't do that. So I just, you know, I started on that end, and I got my puddle going, and I was welding along there and, you know, playing with the pedal. A little too much, a little too little. Just trying to get a hang of how much amperage you need and how to control the puddle. Don't let that heat get, get away from you. And I got right over into about there, and that happened. You know, it just, it melted a hole right through. Just as soon as the molten copper dropped down and hit the, you know, relatively cold steel table, well, it froze. So I had this nice little pocket on this side, just almost completely round. I mean, it, it was really cool the way it formed. And then I thought, well, okay, let me fill that in. So I sat there and filled it in, you know, finally finished the whole weld. But got that little bubble on there. So why does it look so black? That's just the oxide from where it was, you know, red hot, basically, while I was welding on it. And because, you know, it's, it's not completely covered in the shielding gas, it went ahead and, and oxide again. You know, if I'd taken it over to the sink while it was still red hot, and rinsed it off in the sink, it wouldn't have done that. It would have washed the oxide off of it. But I can just go to the grinder, you know, go to the wire wheel on the grinder, and that'll just all buzz right off, and it just goes back to, to shiny copper again. So I'm just a little handicap here because I don't have any trimix gas. You know, all I've got is argon and CO2. If I had argon, CO2, and helium trimix, I'd have a lot more horsepower here, you know, almost double, you know, about 1.7%, I think it is, you know, over what would be listed on the, on the dial. So I'd have a lot more amperage here. I could get it hot quicker and control it a little better, and I could get a little better weld. So what I'm trying to do, really, is just get a nice, you know, a, a big enough fillet in here so I can go back to the lathe and then just turn that and get this nice, smooth, even, you know, look, make it look like it was just, you know, it was machined that way. It, it will be. <laughs> you know, just, just make it look like it was all one piece rather than having a weld in there. I mean, you know, even if I could do, you know, just this, you know, gorgeous, pretty, beautiful little copper weld in there, 
I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't want it to look like that. I want to just machine that all in so it's just all one piece. So I guess the next thing we'll, let's do is uh, let's go to the sink, and I'm going to cool this down because it still makes my glove smoke when I touch it. And then we'll just go to the wire wheel, buzz it off real quick. You can see it's all bright and shiny again. What's then, the next part of what you're going to weld, though? Well, the next thing I want to do, you know, after I get this cleaned up a little, is then I want to get the goblet and get the goblet on there. You know, so I'll have to flip it upside down. I'll have to, you know, clamp it. I'll have to make sure everything is straight and true because I'm going to be spinning it over there. You know, I'm going to turn it in the lathe again, so I don't want it, you know, all out of center and wobbling all around. So. Now, are those fumes dangerous at all? No, that's just steam. It's not like welding bronze or brass, you know, where the fumes from that is dangerous. Maybe it's just bronze. Uh, but, no, that, that was just steam. It's okay. Well, let's go to the wire wheel. So that's what it looks like beforehand. like after. So I'll just go turn that in the lathe and that'll come out just this nice smooth fillet. You know, make it look like it was all one piece, like it was never even welded. So you talked about the gas that you were you used. What about wire? What are you using for welding, TIG welding uh, copper? <laughs> so that's what it looks like. You know, just a really heavy gauge copper wire. And you wonder where, where the heck do you buy that? You know, you can't buy that at the welding store. No, you buy that at the electrical store. <laughs> this is just Romex, you know, house wiring, you know, building wiring. And all I did was cut off a, you know, a chunk about that long and then strip all the insulation off of it. And you got a nice heavy gauge, you know, pure copper wire. I think it's pure. That you can sit there and weld copper with. And I had some left over from when we did, you know, a remodel on the building. You know, added some wiring in the building. So reuse, you know, recycle. Good thing. So I'm going to keep playing with this, get this all together. Um, oh, don't forget that subscribe button. Not sure which side it's on, but it's right down there. Push that subscribe button. And come out to my website, check out my work, sign up for my newsletter. You guys have fun. We'll see you next time. But what I'm trying to do is not burn myself. <laughs>